What's up, friends? I wanted to talk to you about my all-time favorite card of this new expansion. I say all-time favorite. Maybe that's not the right way to say it, but this isn't exactly a deck guide, but you can see that I've kind of built a deck around this one card that I absolutely love and adore. No, it's not Milva. Uh, I actually am okay with Milva. I think that everyone's just overreacting to Milva. I think that Milva's a fine card. It might need maybe... Uh, a, a, a minor nerf, like a small one, but I don't think it's the gigantic bane of everyone's existence that Reddit is crying and making it out to be. Um, that said, obviously Radovid is a problem. Uh, that's going to get fixed uh, shortly, from what I understand. It's going to be fixed uh, to not have the interaction with, um, what's it called? Uprising, that it's not meant to have. Anyway, that said, friends, I want to talk to you about my favorite card, from the expansion, that being Jean, 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 Calve, Calvate, Jan Calvet. I don't know how you're going to pronounce it, but we're going to transmute it right here in front of you so you know I mean business because this card is really damn cool. This card on deploy, sort the cards in your deck from highest to lowest provision. At the start of the game, move self up one position uh, in the deck for each tactic in your starting deck. So, well... How does this work? Well, here he is in all his beautiful glory, just being led through the adoring crowds. And frankly, I get it. So thank you, Lorenzo Mastroianni, for making this beautiful uh, card. But what does this card do technically? Well, frankly, the more tactics you have after you draw and shuffle your deck, before you draw your card, your opening 10-card hand, this will move up. Wherever it is in the deck will move up X amount of spots from the bottom to the top. Uh, based on how many tactics you have. So if you have eight tactics, it goes up from wherever it is, up, bing, 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 to your hand. Now, you can guarantee that this is in your hand all the time by running uh, a package of, like, 12 tactics or whatever. It'll always uh, pretty much be in your hand if you do it, uh, I guess, the right way. That said, friends, lovers, other strangers, uh, this is the beautiful way to do this. You will always get this card in your hand. Uh, if you do it the right way with 12 tactics, which we've done with Enslave. So uh, why is this card so damn cool? I'll tell you why this card is so cool. Because this makes thinning completely um, useless. It makes thinning completely obsolete. This deck thins your deck for you. Uh, this basically puts all the trash at the bottom and gives you everything that you could possibly hope for. And the way that we constructed this deck um, on stream today was that we allowed ourselves to basically always have this in hand, have a big swing play with Enslave, be able to find all of our major pieces as we need them, um, Ardal, Damien, and then everything else, and then basically mulligan our way down through uh, the best pieces. And what's brilliant about this is that you know that you're getting Calve in the first round, which means that when you play him for eight proactive points, you are absolutely 100% going to line up your deck to find everything that you possibly need. So you are basically playing from Blightmaker upward. You're playing with your entire amazing list. Yeah, you might have a Venendal Elite early, uh, early game, but everything below this, everything below Blightmaker, you're throwing away. You might keep the Venendal Elite, but everything, away, everything otherwise is just toss away. Ointment, what a useless card. Who cares? You're never going to play it. You're never playing it because it sits at the bottom of your deck. And that's why we could play with 26 cards. Cards. Why are you playing with 26 cards? Why don't you cut some stuff and improve the top end? Because we don't need to. And in order to find 12 provisions, uh, sorry, 12 tactics, and have enough units, figure it this way. 12 tactics plus tw uh, uh, 13 units equals 25 cards. So if you want to run something like Yennefer's Invocation, which is really our only reliable source of removal, you're going to have to um, play with 26 cards. And how did we fit that in? We fit it in by... Packing the deck with absolute nonsense at the bottom end. Who cares? Tourney Joust? Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, it's useful. Battle Prep? Filler. Ointment? Filler. Imperial Diplomacy? Filler. Really, frankly, the only stuff that you're looking for are stuff like Venendal Elite, etc. Because when it gets down to it, when you get to round two, your draws are going to be Ardal, Damien, Koo. Or, if you already mulliganed into these big boys, you're getting Joaquin, uh, Invocation, Defender. Or, if you have a super amazing opening hand, you're going into uh, Helga, Menno, Amnesty. And then what happens? Well, basically, if you get all the way down to uh, to Menno, or even whatnot, I mean, your Joaquin will always get a Blightmaker, and that is a massive, massive play. So, 
Why is this my favorite card? Because it just allows you to place, it, it removes so many elements of randomness from the deck. It, it creates a reliability and uh, a um, a streamlined process for how your deck's going to operate. Um, you know what's coming around the bed. You know what you know, don't need to worry about. The only, you know, the only misplay, rather, or, or, or um, you know, variable is going to be where, what you're drawing in the opening hand. You might get sauced with a whole bunch of garbage, but for the most part, you're probably drawing some of your top uh, top end here. You're, you're tossing away your ointments and your imperial diplomacies, and you're improving your hand. Mage Assassins are your first order business to mulligan away, and then it's stuff like ointment, etc. An earlier version of this list did run... Um, uh, let me show you. Uh, an earlier version of this list did run uh, only five provisions to go enslave five. So we were able to run scorpions, and we were able to run, um, you know, a Huaraquax to pull our Damien. It didn't have our Dal in it. And that's kind of how we're going with this. But in reality, I wasn't a big fan of this list because uh, Enslave 5 is cool, but it did not guarantee the fact that we were going to get um, Yan Calvate in our opening hand. So that's why we had to play with Royal Decree and go from there. But damn it, I promise you, this card is so damn good. Yan Calvate is such a cool card because it really creates a situation where you no longer need thinning cards, you no longer need to worry about not drawing your golds, um, the only thing you really need to worry about is Mill and Cantarella. I promise you, if Jan Calvate becomes as strong and as, uh, as reliable as he potentially can be, people are going to basically break the code for Jan Calvate, I think, and figure out what the perfect 1-2-3 punch is in terms of what you're drawing in round 3 to really uh, move, the, move the needle. I'm hoping that I can find a way to put Yon Calvate in the list that runs uh, that runs uh, Masquerade Ball. I don't think I'm going to get there because I think that you need to rely on tactics to really make Yon Calvate work, obviously, uh, which means that Enslave typically is the way that you want to go. You're not going to pick any other leader ability other than Enslave, I think. Anyway, that said, friends, this is definitely uh, a really, really cool card. Um, you know, when it comes down to... I, I'm not talking necessarily about power level. Obviously, power level, stuff like Milva and obviously Radovid are, are a little high up there. Uh, Saskia is super strong as well. Uh, looking at other cards out there. Oh, who's talking to me? Can somebody tell me what kind of a world we Oh, you hear that? Where a man dressed up as a bat. Okay, so that was a Batman. That was... Batman that's uh, playing in the background. Apparently, it, <laughs> it just started playing randomly. I had Batman going on my other window. Okay, fantastic. Hopefully, we don't get a copyright strike from that. All right. That said, friends, Jan Calvate, my absolute favorite card of the new set, bar none. It is so cool. Yeah, it's not the flashiest. It's not the most oppressive. But what I like out of card games is knowing what is coming around the bend. I hate RNG. I like when things are basically set in stone for me. I know what's coming up. And playing this card all day today for about five hours, it was such a comforting fact when I'm like, I know what I'm getting. I know what's coming off the top. I know what I need to worry about. I know what I need to not worry about. I know that my next draws are such and such and such and that my uh, my Joaquin is going to pull a Blightmaker and not a Mage Assassin. And that Blightmaker is going to be huge because it's going to pull out the, the Mage Assassin, create a, a significant amount of tempo, and I'm good to go. This this deck is just so nice. It is so damn nice. And it works proactively, which typically uh, Nilfgaard has problems with. And with Enslaved 6, you can really steal some na uh, some naughty stuff, I promise you. Throw an Amnesty in there. What I have done... Now, this Huarquax version, I, I should probably say, is that this Huarquax version here was because it was just a way to sort of uh, mess around with uh, with um, Milva. This basically pulled the Damien out of the deck, put it to the front row, and in round two, if they had already played Saskia, you can probably be sure that you're likely pulling their Simlas, which is good, so they don't get Simlas value, or you're pulling their uh, you're pulling their their um, Milva, and you can enslave the Milva, and then go from there. It's kind of how we were doing it with it. Or if you have a Helga on the board with a charge left on it, you Huaraquax. Damien comes out, Milva comes out, hopefully, and you just hefty Helga and kill the Milva. Easy peasy, right? That's kind of how it goes. But that's how this was done. This deck basically, you see it says here, Milva is fine in mine because she's fine. 
because she doesn't she's not crazy like everyone is whining about and she's mine because i'm gonna enslave her but uh, that's not the point of this video the point of this video is to show you that yan calve is like the coolest thing since sliced bread maybe not the flashiest you don't get the sparkles you know it's not a bedazzled kind of leader or or unit but it's certainly uh my favorite one and that's it thanks for uh, listening friends love you so much please be kind to one another don't forget you're not losing if you're learning, so keep playing the game. And uh, who knows? You might win. Catch you soon. Twitch.tv slash WatchFlake. You can also uh, find me on my Flake Mary podcast with uh, Shin Mary, which is the most recent episode was with uh, Pavel Berja. So it's like the, the Flurza podcast. Cool? Cool. See you soon. Bye-bye. Love you.